Hello everyone, welcome to my channel all about biology and this is Jyoti Verma and today we will discuss about the economic importance of pteridophytes. So basically we will discuss about these points in our video and these points are firstly we will discuss about that how pteridophytes are used as food. Then we will discuss as fiber, handicraft and construction material. Then we will cover up as ornamentals and ritual items. Then as weed, as biofertilizer, as medicine and as ecological indicators. So in this video basically we will focus on these points in detail. So we are going to discuss our first point that is as food. Here we will discuss about some of the pteridophytes that are basically used as food. So coming to our first point that is ferns are good source of starch and the example here is Scythia and Angioptes. Coming to our second point that is sporocarps of Marsilia drummondi that is also called as Australian swamp fern is used in the preparation of bread. This is also used by the tribal people as a food source. Coming to our third point that is Diplasium is eaten in Philippines and Malaysia. And coming to our fourth point that is a salt is prepared from the residual ash of a pteridophyte that is deemed as Asplenium atrobrium. It contains higher percentage of potassium and in several parts of Southeast Asia, the young succinately coiled leaf tips of ferns are eaten. So this is how different species of pteridophytes are used as a food source. Now coming to our next point that is pteridophytes as fiber, handicraft and as construction material. So lots of pteridophytes are used in this category but we will discuss some of the important ones here. So there are several tree ferns, tree fern that is your Scythia. Tree ferns are used as a fencing material and the example here is stem of Scythia magna and Scythia angiensis are used in picket fences basically in highlands of New Guinea. The stem of Ligodium is basically used in making baskets and equisetum debile that is your important ones here equisetum debile is used in cleaning cooking utensils because its stem contains crystals of silica and because of the presence of these crystals of silica in the stem, it makes equisetum an important cleaning agent. Coming to our next point that is pteridophytes as ornamentals and as ritual items. So there are lots of pteridophytes that are used for decorative purposes like the bisque fern that is your silotum, the tree fern that is your scythia contaminants and angiopteris. Besides this, Silaginella species are used in greenhouses as border plants and your adiantum, angiopteris, nephrolapis and teris are basically used in making bouquet. Besides this, coming to ritual items, so lycopodium is basically used in headdress ornamentation for ceremonial occasions and Fronds of nephrolapis are used as a ritual item at the death of their close relatives. So these are the important points, important pteridophytes here that are used in their respective categories. So coming to our next point that is pteridophyte as weeds. So weeds are commonly those plants that are unwanted plants and they basically grow in a particular area automatically. So we will talk about here two important weeds. The first one is Salvinia molesta that is commonly called as water fern and it commonly grows with a high rate on any water reservoir due to which it causes harm to other plant species also. Other plant species cannot grow properly in that area due to the presence of this weed. So it is a harmful one. Coming to the terrestrial fern weeds, the first one is Nephrolapis and the other important one is the Brecken fern that is Pteridium aquilinum and it is capable of colonization at a faster rate on a bare area, especially after fire. So this kind of weed is commonly noticed in tropical regions because in tropical regions, burning of grassland is a common practice. Due to which you will notice this kind of fern commonly in the 
tropical region and it especially grows at a higher rate on that area where there were fire so this is a common weed noticed in tropical region and it is toxic to livestock also it is a poisonous one so coming to our next point that is pteridophytes as bio fertilizer so bio fertilizers are those substances that basically enhance the growth of plants that provide nutrients to the plant directly or indirectly so we will talk about here azola that is your mosquito fern and it contains a endophytic cyanobacterium within the leaf cavity and that endophytic cyanobacterium is termed as anabena azolae that is very important point here and it is asked in multiple choice type questions also so it is the endophytic cyanobacterium present in the leaf cavity and azola because of the presence of this endophytic cyanobacterium azola is used as a bio fertilizer in rice fields and because of its capability to enhance the growth and the productivity in within the rice fields it is also called as goddess of fertility azola is also called as goddess of fertility that is very important point here and azola pinnata is common in our country there are many species of azola but azola pinnata is common in our country and azola is also very important because it is a heavy metal resistant plant and it shows good tolerance against certain heavy metals like arsenic mercury lead copper cadmium and chromium so it is also very important because it can tolerate high concentration of heavy metals so it also acts as an indicator of these heavy metals so coming to our next point that is pteridophytes as medicine so there are lots of pteridophytes that are used as a source of medicine and they are used in treatment of different diseases so we have a chart here that uh, is showing different types of pteridophytes their plant parts used and their medicinal uses so coming to our first one that is adiantum caudatum the plant part used here is frond and rhizome and medicinal uses is wound healing and cough fever so it is basically used in the treatment of cough and fever coming to our next one that is elsophila glabra the plant part used here is the rhizome and it is used in treatment of snake bite next one is dryopteris cochleata its rhizomes are used for the treatment of leprosy next one is marsilia minuta and the plant part used here is the extract of young leaves that are basically used for the treatment of migraine next is adiantum incisum and its fresh or dried leaves are used in treatment of malaria and bronchial diseases next one is silaginella flabellata and it is used in the treatment of fever coming to our next one that is pteridium aquilinum that is used to treat tooth ache and mouth infection and last one here is ligodium longifolium that is basically used in the treatment of diarrhea so these are some of the pteridophytes that are commonly used as medicine for the treatment of different diseases and coming to our last point that is as ecological indicators so there are lots of pteridophytes that are used as ecological indicators for the presence of certain metal or for the presence of certain heavy metal within the soil and among them one of the important example here that i have taken is of equisetum that is a gold indicator pteridophyte so that is very important point here about the equisetum which is a gold indicator it indicates the presence of gold within the soil and it also indicates the presence of some other minerals within the soil so that is all about for today if you like the video just subscribe to my channel for further updates and the notes of this topic will be uploaded on the telegram channel as well as on the instagram thank you so much